In part one of this series, I described a bit about radioactive processes. In this second part, I will discuss how a nuclear reactor works. Usually, a reactor uses a controlled fission process to produce thermal energy, which is then converted into electricity. With the exception of the reactor core, a fission power plant is very similar to any other power plant that relies on thermal energy. The difference is the means by which the thermal energy is produced. Nuclear fuel is most commonly compounds containing uranium-235, which makes up less than 1% of uranium ore. Most uranium ore is uranium-238, and we have seen in part one that this is radioactive and decays primarily by alpha emission. Uranium-235 is fissionable and breaks up when colliding with high-energy neutrons. Each time uranium-235 is split, it produces another neutron. These go on to produce 4, then 8, then 16, and a chain reaction results. Uranium ore is radioactive. In most reactors, the 1% abundance of uranium-235 isotope is the material most commonly used. Since the concentration is not high in the ore, the number of uranium atoms that decay is not great. This is called subcritical mass. If the concentration increases, like in a nuclear reactor, then a greater flux of radiation is produced and its energy is used to boil water. Reactors must maintain a mass close to the critical mass in order to produce the greatest amount of heat. But if the concentration gets too great, then an uncontrollable flux of radiation produces so much heat that a meltdown can occur. The temperature climbs well over 2,000 degrees Celsius, which is more than twice the melting point of steel, and the radiation produced increases exponentially. Let us look at the masses in more detail and also look at the parts of the nuclear reactor. At subcritical mass, a sustained nuclear chain reaction is not possible. At the critical mass, a sustained nuclear reaction can occur, which produces a steady supply of energy. This is what nuclear reactors do. By using moderators, nuclear reactors vary the number of neutrons produced and sustain an ongoing nuclear reaction. At supercritical mass, a nuclear chain reaction goes out of control. If the chain reaction gets out of control, then a nuclear meltdown can occur. This can cause an ecological disaster. In 1997, there was a partial core meltdown at Three Mile Island in the United States. About 150,000 people had to be evacuated to a seven kilometer that is five mile radius around the plant. However, studies have shown that this accident did not cause any significant increase in cancer rates in the surroundings. The Chernobyl disaster in Russia in 1986 was a disastrous meltdown. Although only 57 people died directly, the real figures that include the long-term effects of radiation leading to cancer may reach up to 400,000, according to Greenpeace. 336,000 people had to be resettled because the surrounding land became uninhabitable. Rivers, lakes, and land were contaminated and may remain uninhabitable for several hundred years. To understand a nuclear process, we have to know how a reactor works and how the nuclear produces fuel. A fission reactor has the same sort of design as an ordinary coal or oil-fired electrical generator. They boil water and the steam turns turbines. A lot of care and advanced technology goes into the design and building of nuclear reactors. The control rods regulate the rate of the nuclear reaction. This effectively changes the mass of the nuclear material by moving the rods in and out. Of the core. Control rods are made of material that absorbs neutrons, thereby reducing the number of neutrons available to sustain the reaction. 
The reactor core is surrounded by a thick concrete shell that prevents radioactive particles from escaping the core, being instead absorbed by the dense concrete. The moderator is a substance that fills the reactor core and surrounds the fuel and control rods. Ideally, it is a substance that will not absorb neutrons, but instead slows them down. Common moderators include graphite and heavy water. Often, if heavy water is used as a moderator, it also serves as the reactor's primary coolant. The fuel rods are the main components of the reactor. Each fuel rod is a zirconium or stainless steel tube containing one or more pellets of radioactive fuel, typically enriched uranium. The reactor's operation is initiated by exposing the fuel rods to a neutron emitting source. The reactor's primary coolant is the fluid that passes through the reactor core. The primary coolant is heated by the nuclear reaction in the core and transfers the thermal energy from the core to the rest of the reactor. The primary coolant is always in a closed system to prevent leakage of radioactive material out of the core. The coolant is the part of the reactor that performs the actual work that is converted into electrical energy. Coolant passes through a chamber where it is in thermal contact with the heated primary coolant from the reactor core. The heat from the primary coolant causes the water to turn into steam, which passes through a turbine that is used to produce electrical energy. It is then condensed back into water to re-enter the cycle once again. In the turbine, steam is forced through a chamber where it rotates a propeller-like arrangement connected to a rotating shaft. This shaft turns a magnetic which is in a coil of wire and thereby produces an electric current in the wire. In the condenser, the steam is cooled and converted into water. This allows the coolant to be reused. Water from a river or some other large body is drawn into the reactor to absorb heat from the gaseous coolant and thereby condenses it. The water is then flushed back into the same body of water. Since the water leaves the reactor at a much higher temperature than it was initially, reactors are often significant sources of thermal pollution. Because it does not come into direct contact with the primary coolant in the core, no radiation is emitted. I hope this gives you some useful insight into nuclear reactors. In the next and final part of this series, I will talk about the harmful effects of radiation on human health.